All right, good morning. Good morning. Uh, you know, uh, some of the uh, metaphysical writers, I'm particularly thinking of Joel Goldsmith, talks about the I of our being. And he says the I of our being is God, it's spirit, it's truth, it's the highest and best within us. It's the very Christ of our being. And so my topic this morning is I can. Um, so for us, when we think of this idea of I can, this is not about human willpower. This is about recognizing that there is the presence of the Father, Mother, God within us that does the work. Um, and so this is what we want to be in remembrance of as we begin. Now, you know, I'm from back east, and there's an old saying in Vermont. Uh, it says, reach for the high apples first. You can get the low ones anytime. Uh, and so I, I like that because humanly, you know, we can only do so much. Through our own willpower, through our human effort, through our human muscle, we can only get so far. And I realize, you know, we can get maybe a little bit further if we're really organized and we become experts of our own time management. We can do a little bit more than that. But the key, I think, is in being, not in doing. You know, out of being, we reach for the high apples. That's the natural result of working on our own state of being. We want to recognize that because we are the offspring of the divine, that there is divinity within us now, there is divinity within us always, and there is something much greater than we can humanly perceive, perceive ourselves to be, and it already exists within us. So don't we all know that, that who I am, who we are, is more than just this physical body? I think if you're here, you probably know that. You have some inkling into that kind of thinking. You know, I know we can have our lives work. No matter what condition our life is in right now, I believe that we can, I can, you can, have our lives work in a greater way. We can be healthy, we can be happy, we can be abundantly supplied, we can have love in our life, our creative expression can be absolutely fulfilling. And if we are doing something that's contributing to not that, I know we have the capacity right now to change. We can feel close to God in every moment, in every situation. We can feel connected with other people. We can perform sort of a, a spiritual alchemy within our own lives and turn whatever we have and whatever experience we're having right now into gold, into a greater expression of God. So we will experience change, improvement, expansion in our lives because of what flows out from us, not from what comes to us. You know, Science of Mind says that we are, what we are searching for is already within us. That's kind of a hard thing to grasp. I think about that a lot. Okay, it's already within me. It's already within me. So we are in the process of opening a way out for the good of God that is already within us to come forward into our life and expression. We recognize and reveal an imprisoned splendor. So I think the, healings of, the healing of our lives will not be because of something we get. Right? And I think for a lot of us, we've been telling ourselves, my life will be so much better when I get, and you fill in the blank, whatever that is. When I get a parking space closer to my office, my life will be so much better. My life will be so much better when my neighbor moves to the other side of the world. My life will be, you know, you just fill in the blank for yourself, right? But the healing of our lives will not be because of something external to us. You know, scripturally, we read that the kingdom of heaven is within Wow. So what is the kingdom of heaven? It's a state of consciousness, right? And in this heavenly state of consciousness, we feel connected, connected with God, with each other. We feel peaceful at one, belonging in the universe. We feel loving. You know, all that we have is ours by right of consciousness. We teach that in the science of mind, that everything we have is ours by right of consciousness. So on one level, we've earned it, you know? And if we didn't, we wouldn't have it. On some level, we believe this is right for us, or we wouldn't have it. Right? And on a greater level, I think on a deeper level, it is the grace of God in our lives that has been freely given that supplies us with everything that we need. So our responsibility is to build our consciousness, to work on it continuously. Right? So now I'm going to quote somebody that you would not expect in church, but I love her, Janis Joplin. She said, don't compromise yourself, you're all you've got, baby. Yeah, so don't compromise yourself, you're all you've got, baby. So this is not about getting things, it is about building a consciousness, and, and as the result of building that consciousness, more of what is inherent within us gets expressed 
and there's more room to, to hold the good of God. When we build consciousness, things come. Through our daily spiritual practice, consciousness expands. It's just the natural result. You know, it's, I always tell people, it's like going to the gym. I remember decades ago, the last time I was at the gym. But I, I know that this is how it works. That, you know, my good opinion about going to the gym didn't really matter. If I just shut up and did the exercises, it made a difference. You know, if I got on the bicycle and the treadmill and did all those things, it made a difference. And spiritual practice is the same thing. Whether you're in the mood for it or not, whether you feel like it or not, if you do spiritual practice, your consciousness expands, right? We see God as all, and we behold the divine in all people, which to me seems like a really good idea this week in our life. Yes, I do. So it may be we start simply by saying to ourselves, you know what, I'm willing to see God in this person, or I'm willing to see God in this situation. I'm willing to see God on the 405. I'm willing to see God, you know. That doesn't mean you're, you're, you're looking for trouble. That means that you're looking to have a change in your own perception. See, we're not going to get God. God is the energy of love and intelligence, and that power of love and intelligence that's everywhere already exists within us. And love, I believe, that is within us is something that we give. And the more we give it, the more it comes back to us. So as we give from that which is within, is within us, we will see that changes take place out here in the world. See, I think it's the easiest and most tempting thing to want to withhold this love that exists within each and every one of us, to base it on behavior, to say, well, I would love you if you would show up on time. I would love you if you would shape up. I would really love you if you would be the way I want you to be. You know, I would really love you if you looked a certain way. Well, you know, we all know what it's like when somebody withholds because they want us to be different, and we all know how terrible that feels. You know, because even if they're not saying it, no, 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 you're fine, but you know underneath they're saying, you need to change, you need to be different. Right? We know that doesn't feel good, and so it makes sense that we would offer the same graciousness to other people. You know, we stand in our lives and cut through the illusion of seeing ourselves as small and separate and thinking, oh, I can't. You know, humanly, again, we can do only so much, I believe. And now, I believe that what we can do humanly is far more than we have let ourselves experience. But I know that the divinity within us has an infinite capacity to expand and grow and heal. It's like we believe we have only this finite amount of love, right? And that if I'm careless with the love that's within me, if I'm reckless with it and I give it away, if I've squandered it, then there won't be any more when I really, really need it. That is not how it works, and we all know that, I think. But it was my job to remind you this morning. You know, the truth is, right now is when we really, really need it. Oh, and right now is when we really, really need it. Oh, and then there's right now, we really, really need it. That's when we have to give it, right? It's the law of life that we only have what we give or express, right? And what we give out comes back, and what we give out comes back. So there really is no, there's no um, validity in thinking, I have to hold on to this. So if we ask, how can I do more? How can I be more? How can I have more power in the world? The answer is actually quite simple. It's about loving more. You know, Emmett Fox wrote this beautiful little piece about if only you could love enough, you would be the most powerful person in the world. You know, and I think that that's very foreign to us because we think of worldly power as not particularly loving. But then if we look, if we look at the lives of great spiritual beings, they were tremendously powerful in the world and they were very, very loving people. You know, and the voice, so, I think of it like this, and it's probably the generation that I grew up in, but it seemed like in the 60s, in TV shows, there was often an evil twin, right? Didn't I Dream of Jeannie have an evil twin, right? And Bewitched, she had like an evil twin too, you know? I think it must have been fun for them as actors to get to play both characters, you know? But anyway, I think that in theory, at least, that we probably have an evil twin within our own mind. So there's that part of us that's connected to God that always wants the highest and best for us, that wants us to come from a loving place and do the loving thing and be high-minded about things and say nice things to people. But then there's that voice of the evil twin, right? 
You know, that's always saying, well, it can't be that easy, and you can't just go around loving everybody, and they haven't earned it, and on and on and on. This is not easy, you know? Well, hello, it is that easy. You know, look at how we've done with it so far. I mean, we have years and years and years of not being particularly loving, and I think that for most, that has not worked out very well. If we look at the world and see where we have not been loving, that has not been a very successful approach. There are zillions of years of negativity out there, you know, years of hating and fighting and judging. So to continue with that way of being, it's like saying, um, it's like saying there's a leak on your side of the boat. You need to do something about it, right? Well, the, the fact is, it's going to affect us all, right? What's happening is going to affect us all. And science of mind would have us ask, what does our mind do with what happens out here, right? So I know there's an election coming this week. And, I, and please don't tell me who you're going to vote for and stuff like that. It's none of my business. Really, don't tell me. No, that's, a, that's not an in-church thing as far as I'm concerned. But what I do think is important that we all bring the best consciousness within us to the voting, right? That we prayerfully consider what we're voting for, right? Because this is how spirit gets expressed in the world. We do the work in consciousness, and then we take action in the world, but the action we take in the world is enveloped in really good consciousness, right? Bless you. Ha! I'll take that as an amen. Yes, there we are. <laughs> so we will use it, we will use what our mind does with the things out here as evidence to join with our brothers and sisters or to separate from each other, right? We will affirm our unity or we'll affirm our distance. We'll give love and blessing and prayer for healing or we'll withhold it. But you know, I have to say that Withdrawing our prayer from a situation is like saying no good can happen here. You know, I think that it's really important where, wherever you are, you know, with things that, that we put our prayer into the governance of our, our life and our country and our world. You know, I mean, nothing good will happen if everybody withdraws their prayer. I mean, think about that. We don't know. Without the prayer that we're doing right now, it might all fall apart. And I don't want to find out. Right? So I think we have all had a feeling that, uh, that we would not make it through at some point in our life. You know, I'm not going to make it through the day. I'm not going to make it through this job or a project I'm working on. Or I'm not going to make it through learning this new thing I've set myself up to learn. Or I'm not going to make it through this change in relationship or a loss that I've had in my life. Everybody understands that, I think. And so why we feel that way is because of what our mind is telling us in the moment. Or I will also add that we're listening to someone else in that moment, right? Because they're saying, oh, this is going to be so difficult. Well, you know, that's their experience. It doesn't have to be your experience. Your life will never be the same as somebody else's life, you know? And the fact is, yes, your life today will not be the same as it was yesterday, but that's just true for all of us every day anyway. You know, uh, people will say, oh, well, you know, you should have been happy when you had what you had, or if only you had been better or worked harder or made more money. So, all of that's nonsense. All of that is about external things, right? And the external things are not the level of cause. In the science of mind, we teach that causation is within. So we're so willing to give our power away and believe in, in something lesser rather than something greater. I think we would rather stay in the... Uh, moaning and gnashing of teeth. Like it says in the Bible, there was moaning and gnashing of teeth. Doesn't that just sound like a good time, huh? Uh, <laughs> that we would rather stay in that energy so often than do what we need to do to have healing, to improve, and, and get out of the deep mushrooms we find ourselves in. So I think we have to, what we must face is that external conditions are the outpicturing of our mental attitudes or our state of consciousness, our beliefs about ourself, our beliefs about life. That's why the external conditions are the way they are right now. Because the principle is, as within, so without. Now, how do we get through those things we thought we could never get through? Well, something, what? A power greater than we are, and yet we are a part of it, is our strength, is our foundation. You know, I think we detach from the, from the sense evidence, you know, and, and, and we detach from being identified with outer things, and we remember, oh, within me, there is a power, there is a presence, there is a principle, I call it God, or I call it love, I call it the universe, and that's what I'm relying on. 
I saw a decal on the back of a car window recently, and it said, fear God. I didn't like that. In fact, I actually felt kind of sad reading that. I thought, no, I do not fear God, but fear ignorance of God. That's what I fear. Um, see, f fear living your life and not knowing that you are a center of divine activity. You know, because if you don't know that right where you are, God is fully present, you live very differently than if you think God is far off someplace. And if you think God is loving and God is within you, you live differently than if you think God is outside of me and God is vengeful and, and you know, angry and, and, you know, all that sort of stuff. I, um, I come back again and again, and I think this is important for us to know, like the scripture says, that with God, all things are possible. You know, there are spiritual laws in the universe that we live in that respond to us according to what we think and what we feel and what we believe. There are laws in place, laws of the universe, laws of consciousness that are responding to us. So I don't believe in fearing God because God is love. And why would we be afraid of the loving, intelligence present, loving intelligent presence that created each and every one of us out of itself, right? We are one with that love. It's who and what we truly are. So I think where we get into trouble is when we forget that. That's what we have to fear. I have to fear forgetting when I don't remember if I were going to fear at all, right? You see, because that's where the trouble comes from in our lives and in the world. When people forget that they are connected with each other, when we forget that we are connected with something greater, when we forget that who we are has value, that we have an intrinsic kind of value, and so does everyone else, it seems to me that's where we get off track. So the, there is never a problem in spiritual truth. You know, we learn from our difficulties, right? If we're paying attention at all, the difficulties we go through, we learn something from them. We're not a victim of them. We, we hold to a higher ground. You know, Hemingway said that the world breaks everyone and some of us are strong at the broken places. And I hope that's so for us. You know, that where we have been through big, big, difficult stuff, you know, that we've learned something and we've become better because we've been through that stuff. If we've been through horrible stuff and we didn't become better as a person, oh, that really concerns me. I think, oh, we're probably going to repeat that experience again and again. So recently, oh, I don't remember how many days ago, but I was out walking the dogs at night and there was a full moon. And it was a really great moon. And I thought, oh, well, it's fall. This must be a harvest moon. I'm not sure if it actually was or not. But I was thinking about the moon. And you know, the moon has no light of its own. The moon just reflects light. Right? And so, you know, in ancient times, when, uh, when people didn't see the moon, or, uh, you know, they thought, oh my God, it, it, this could be the end of the world. This could be, this could be the end of the world, you know. But, but I noticed, I noticed as, as the moon was changing, you know, as changing in size, it doesn't mean that the light isn't there. I'm just seeing less of it. So if it goes from full to smaller, 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 smaller. But the moon hasn't changed in size. That's, that's just to my five senses that I think the moon has gotten small. You know? But after a time of darkness, what we know metaphysically, spiritually, is that the light always comes. And like I said, in ancient times, people were terrified of an eclipse or something like that, right? because they thought that the gods had taken away the moon or the sun. I, I we have to be the one to remember the light. Somebody has to remember the light. Somebody has to be the one who's willing to hold the light for ourselves and for other people. If you give it to somebody else, they may forget it. They may drop it. So you have to continue to hold it yourself anyway. You know, I think we get terrified of the darkness in the world, our world, the world we're living in right now. You know, because we think, oh my God, this is the way it's going to be. It's going to be this way forever. This is permanent. The light will never come again. There will never be a healing to this situation. Hey, come back to truth. Really, really, come back to truth. Don't go down that road. We teach with God all things are possible. You know, and so what would I say to myself? I'll tell you what I've been saying. Through the power of God within me, I am beyond this. That's a great thing to say. Through the power of God within me, I am beyond this. Say that with me now. Through the power of God within me, I am beyond this. Think about that. The spirit of God within you is not affected by condition. The spirit of God within you is not affected by anything outside. So what is in our life right now is here to help us find our way. And we have to tell ourselves, I can. 
But when we say I can, I don't mean exclusively the human part of you, although we certainly want to include that. I also mean that spiritual part of you, that God part, that Christ part, that universal presence within. Who I am is more than this. God in me is greater than any difficulty, and I will give my attention to God, not the difficulty. Let's pray. <laughs> So we turn our attention inward now for a moment to just recognize that we are surrounded and filled with God's infinite loving spirit, that the presence of God within us is a reality. It's truth, it's love, it's infinite intelligence. And so I know for each and every one of us, we are one with this infinite presence of God. I also know that on the unseen side of life, we are all connected. We are all one in the mind and heart of God. And so in this awareness of our oneness with God and with each other, I speak the word for us today that yes, we can. That whatever is before us, I know that with God, all things are possible. And so whether it's a healing of our body or a healing in relationship, a healing of our finances, or whatever it may be, you can fill in the blank for yourself. I am certain that we co-create with that presence of God within us and that it is at our discretion how we commune with that power, and how we demonstrate it. So I claim for each and every one of us today, healing is happening. That yes, we can, yes, we do, yes, we are right now. That consciousness where healing is the natural result. So we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, our parents and children, all of our loved ones. We see them in our mind's eye, and we know that right where they are, God is. That we are, they also, are surrounded. They are filled with God's presence. And we claim for them that perfect healing is happening. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world around us. So every situation that we think of, everything that's been in the news, everything that pulls at our attention, everything that could possibly make us fearful or doubting, we say we have a huge God, a God that's big enough to encompass all of that. And God is present in all of it as peace and healing and divine right outcome, and harmony, and all needs met for people everywhere. We bless our church. We bless all churches, synagogues, and temples, and mosques, and ashrams, all paths to God. Even those paths that don't look like paths, we know they're a path too. So with a full heart, I give thanks that this is so. I give thanks that we are blessed exceedingly today and every day, and with a full heart, I release this word. I know it's done, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. Amen.